Good morning, everyone. We're going to invite you to take your seats and settle in for our time of worship today. Um, I had a special request, so I'm going to begin with that uh, special request. The Lord is risen. Oh, great. We were worried that none of you would remember or know how to respond. Today is, one of the, is the greatest day in the history of humankind, but especially for the church as we gather in worship So we hope and pray that you've had a long, good weekend, and as we gather to celebrate Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that God would truly be with you and bless you in many, many ways today. Let us begin with a moment of silence as we prepare for today's holy worship. Please join me in today's call to worship. O day of resurrection, we lift our hearts with joy. O day of resurrection, we will live with hope. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. God of resurrecting power, you lift our hearts with joy when we see the tomb is empty. God of resurrecting hope, you fill us with excitement when we hear that Jesus Christ is risen. God of resurrecting love, you embrace us with courage when we trust in the power of new life that you promise in the risen Christ. Today we gather to offer you all glory, honor, and praise with hearts overflowing in Jesus' name. Trusting in the power of God to make all things new, brothers and sisters, let us join together and confess our sins before God and with one another. God of resurrecting joy, we confess it's not easy to sustain Easter hope. We let discouragement, fear, and frustration to settle in, and we let anger and anxiety turn our hearts away from you. Resentment and disappointment cling to us, and we forget your great mercy and love. Forgive us. Restore within us the joy and hope you promise us in Christ our risen Lord. Amen. More than any other Sunday, brothers and sisters, let us hear the good news and receive the assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn you? Me or us? Only Christ, and yet Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ even prays for us. Believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ, you and I, we are forgiven and set free for a brand new life by God's resurrecting grace. Amen. With that good news in our hearts, we invite the praise team forward as they lead us in songs of praise. And afterwards, our clerk of session, Ann Wong, will lead us in prayer. So I was planning to do the same thing. One of the early statements for Christians is, 
Christ is risen, and the people say, he is risen indeed. So let's try it again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you. Today is a day of celebration. Um, the Bible tells us that on the third day of Jesus' death, some women went to the tomb and found that the very large stone that blocked the entrance to the tomb was rolled away. They entered the tomb and found a young man dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. But he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they had put him. Go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. It will be just as he told you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please stand if you're able and join us in celebration of Jesus' resurrection as we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Our next song is called Mighty Cross by Elevation Worship. Um, I believe it's new to most of us. The introduction to this song is actually best given in their own words. Quote, this song reminds us to give thanks and praise to Jesus for his victory. We can rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus has won the victory for us. Let us remember the power of Jesus' sacrifice and the hope it brings us. Let us give thanks and praise to Jesus for his mighty cross. That death 
surrender to the mighty cross of Jesus Christ. The earth will shake beneath the weight of dark and skies. On his brow, a crown of sorrow. was our strength. No word he spoke, his love was shown for all to see. Oh, the cross of Jesus Christ is the Thank you, praise team. That was beautiful. At this time, uh, we'd like to pray for others. Um, please bow, bow your heads and we'll follow with the Lord's Prayer together. Gracious God, on this Easter Sunday, 
We lift our prayers for others to you. We pray for Amy Pong's mother, who is in Hong Kong and recovering from a stroke. We give thanks that she has been given immediate care and that family members are available to be with her. We're thankful that, she, that they are seeing signs of improvement and she is fully conscious. We pray that she will stabilize and will be able to swallow without assistance soon. We pray for her to have the strength to open her eyes for longer periods of time. Lord, we pray that Amy's mom will come to know you and the mercy and love you have shown her through this trial. Lord, we also pray for Amy and her family, family members who um, are going through a really tough time right now. Lord, give them strength and patience, Lord, and keep them well. We pray for Eldon's colleague's daughter, Erin, who is battling Hodgkin's lymphoma. We give thanks that after several chemotherapy treatments, there is noticeably shrunk tumors. Lord, we lift up Erin to you as she goes for her final chemotherapy treatment following the Easter break in early April. We pray that she recovers quickly so she can return back to work full time. We pray that she's healed from any remaining tumors in her body and that she will gain, regain full strength again. Lord, we pray for our brother Marius and the conflict with his neighbor. We pray for the resolution to bring him peace and that he will have enjoyment with his family members at home. We pray for our church ministries. We pray for Mark Lee Chan and his work with Ambassadors for Christ. May you continue to guide him as he leads and journeys alongside the high school student leaders and attendees. We pray for Sam and Linda as they serve in the GTA community. We pray that God will prepare their hearts, prepare the hearts of Sam and Linda and those he leads them to meet each week as they reach out and care for the students, especially those who are away from home and family. Lord, we pray for caregivers looking after their loved ones, that God will give them strength, health, and peace, and that those who are being cared for will have peace and faith, no matter what the outcome. God of Easter Day, break into our moments of celebration and joy. Give us gratitude, the impulse to share and to care for each other. Lord, we lift all these pray prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Thank you, Anne, for leading us in prayer today on Easter Sunday. Um, let's dismiss our children to Sunday school with our blessings and prayers. You have a good time of learning as you join with your teachers today. I really only have one announcement that I wanted to pass on to you. Uh, please do check the newsletter that gets sent out regularly each week so that you are on top of upcoming, um, on top of information as well as upcoming days. There are a few things that's on the pipeline, so we hope that you'll be mindful of those days. Last weekend we had our ACM, so I wanted to, just on behalf of session, just give a shout out and thank you to many of you who worked behind the scenes. Those of you who attended, obviously for you to come and to, again, celebrate what God has done for us the year past. and and look forward to uh, the new year with hope and anticipation of what God can do in and through us. Uh, for those of you who provided the food for us, we thank you so much, and also to the board of managers who work behind the scenes and take care of 
the many different aspects physically of our, of our ministry, especially to Daniel Lin and uh, David Mark, who is the um, uh, session representative of the Board of Managers for all your work last, um, last Sunday. Is Daniel here? Daniel Lin? You are here? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm just reminded of that video that he put together last week. It was so, it was so well, well done. Thank you to all of you for joining last, uh, last weekend at the ACM. Um, I'm going to invite you to turn to the lectionary reading assigned for today, Easter Sunday. Mark chapter uh, 16, verses 1 to verse 8. Are we okay over there? Someone's coughing. Is it Mrs. Two, she okay? She okay? <laughs> Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to verse 8. I will be actually looking, we'll be looking at the, the rest of the chapter, but uh, I'll just do verses 1 to 8 as a way to kick things off. It was alluded to actually by the praise team as they did their opening set, but it's uh, especially on this day, it's a good thing to hear it once again. The word of God for the people of God as we gather in holy worship on this day called Resurrection Sunday. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now, obviously, we know that they did tell the story, but Mark is just saying how terrified and surprised they were at what just had occurred to them, and so we will uh, use that for today's teaching. Let us pray together as we prepare to hear today's teaching. God Almighty, today, above any other day, your people gather with anticipation, celebration, joy, and hope. But at the same time, Lord, we come bringing the realities of our lives, and we want to ask of you to speak to us as we hear and think about the old story that we know so well and have heard so many times. Revive in our hearts a desire to listen and to hear your word for your people today. That whatever we may be in our journey through faith in this life, God, today we remember that it is Resurrection Sunday, a day of hope, a day of joy and day of celebration. Instill that in us, O oh Lord as we hear and contemplate what this means for all of us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So let's begin with a question. It's a question about manners. Let's, is it bad manners to tell the ending of a movie? Is it bad manners to tell the end of a movie. I think we would all agree, yes? Right? It is wrong. It is to tell the ending of a movie is bad form. It's a serious no no, especially if you've been looking forward to seeing this movie and you've heard the hype about it and you want to go see it. You're not supposed to spoil the surprise for other people. And yet, people can't seem to stop doing it. So as I was preparing and working for working on today's teaching, I was thinking of 
all the movies with the surprising twist at the end, right? Um, you're watching it. You think you've understood. You've got the enti- entire story, plot line figured out. And then what happens? At the end, Charleston Heston finds the Statue of Liberty on the beach. Remember that? You think you know the story and where it's going to go, and all of a sudden you realize, you find out, Darth Vader turns out to be the ultimate deadbeat dad. Then there's movies like The Sixth Sense. Do you remember that? Wow. And my personal favorite, The Usual Suspects, Kaiser Soze. If you haven't seen the movie, go check that out. And there's so many other movies that you can probably, you can give an example of. These movies are known for their surprise endings. The lead up is so good, the story is great, there's a great plot and the storytelling is really amazing, but then the, the end just totally, wow, it surprises you. These movies are known for their surprise endings. It's the ending, in fact, that makes the movie, right? because you did not see it coming. Yes, it is bad manners to tell how a movie ends, but let's admit, but there are some endings that are just too good not to give away. The same could be said about the Easter story. The ending is too good not to give away. So today I'm going to, I know that many of us, if not all of us, we've heard this story all our lives, especially if you were growing up in the church. Today I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to, my intention is to do that in any way. So I'm going to invite you, imagine that this is your first time hearing the events surrounding Easter. You know that Jesus of Nazareth had become something of a celebrity. The politicians, the leaders of the people do not, did not care for him, and neither do the religious leaders. So a plot is put into place. One of his closest followers will betray him. Jesus will be arrested. He'll be beaten, subjected to a mockery of a trial, and then ultimately sentenced to death. That should be it. All she wrote for this radical rabbi and his ragtag band of followers. But that's not how the story ends. I'm about to spoil the ending for you. So that every twist and turn that happens in this story, that you would know in advance. Why? Because here's the invitation for today. If you know how his story ends, Jesus' story ends, you and I, you will know how your story can possibly play out as well. Again, an invitation. We know the story. We've heard it. But let's say for the sake of today, for the first time, open minds and open hearts. The invitation. If you know how his story ends, the invitation is you will know how your story can possibly play out as well. It's Friday night. After hours of suffering on a cruel Roman cross, Jesus has breathed his final breath. He is dead. Most of his followers have scattered, except for a few faithful women. His body is then placed in a borrowed tomb. What happens next? How does this part of the story end? I'm going to give you three spoilers today. Spoiler number one. Jesus conquers death and he rises from the grave. Jesus conquers death and he rises from the grave. For many people, this is the most offensive part of the whole story about Jesus. For many people, this is the part of the story that's most difficult to accept. Because when it comes to Jesus, not many people deny that he existed. Historically, almost everybody will say that Jesus existed. When it comes to Jesus, most people will say that he existed. They admire his ethics. They they think that he was a respectable teacher and so on and so on. He was a good example for mankind and so on and so on. But the idea that he physically rose from the dead, no way. That is totally too much unacceptable. 
unbelievable. For example, in his biography, Mahatma Gandhi, he said that he would accept Jesus as a martyr. He was a wonderful example, a great teacher, a good example for the rest of us. But the idea that his death was in any way miraculous, Gandhi just could not accept that. Something similar could be said in um, something similar could be said for Thomas Jefferson. He was the third president of the United States. He was a secular humanist. He was a professed secular humanist, and so he could not, or rather would not, accept the miraculous teachings of the Bible. He did not deny Jesus existed. He just had trouble, and he could not accept the miraculous teachings or events of Scripture. So you know what he did? He decided to put together his own version of the gospel. He edited his own version of the gospel. The title is on the screen. And he calls it The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. So in this, his version of the gospel, he removed and took away any reference to the supernatural um, miracles and so on and so forth. All he kept was, you know, what happened in his teaching and so on and so forth. Jefferson's biography of Jesus ends this way. It's on the screen. This is the way his gospel ends. There laid they Jesus, and they rolled a great stone at the mouth of the sepulcher, and they departed. The end. For Thomas Jefferson, that's how the story ended. Back in the 1960s, the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, ended much the same way. Jesus dies on the cross, his final words being, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then, for those of you who've seen it, the sad music plays. And that's it. Curtain. We're supposed to believe that's all there is to it. But that's not how the story Ends. What really happens is that on the following Sunday morning, while it was still dark, a few women go to the tomb in order to anoint the body with spices. Um, this was just an ancient ritual that was done back in the day to delay the decomposition of the body after death. But when the women got there, the tomb was empty, except for an angel dressed in white. And in our reading today, verse 6, do not be alarmed, the angel said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. So we follow the story. After dying a very real death on Friday, after lying in a cold tomb on Saturday, Jesus was now on Sunday fully alive. That's the story. Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered death. And here's what that ought to mean. Because Jesus conquered death, you and I, you have the opportunity to conquer life. Because Jesus conquered death, you have the opportunity to conquer Life. This is what Paul was talking about when he said in Romans chapter 8. God who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Now, pay attention. P Paul is not talking about the sweet by and by. He's not talking about, you know, when you die, you go to heaven, things like that. He's not talking about that. He's talking about today. He's talking about the present in other words, you can experience the fullness of life, resurrection life, today. Today. The same power that brought Jesus back to life can bring hope back to life for you. Can bring joy back to life for you. Can bring purpose, meaning, vision, passion back to life for you. 
Jesus conquered death so that you can conquer life. We see this in his disciples, a total and complete transformation. In one disciple in particular, remember the story. On Friday, Peter was, Peter was Jesus' number one. Peter was dejected. He was ashamed. In a moment, moment of cowardice, he denied being a follower of Jesus. In fact, he denied even knowing Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus, as Jesus was being led away in shackles, Peter, he was following close by. For the third time, he denied being his follower. And do you remember the way Luke tells the story? At that moment, Jesus turned and he looks and he sees Peter and looks straight at Peter. And then Peter, he remembered the guilt overwhelmed him, the despair. He remembered what Jesus had said, that Peter would deny Jesus knowing him. Now think about that. You can see how this story might play out for Peter. It looks like the end for Peter. But what happens next? The next spoiler, number two, Peter gets a second chance at life. Peter gets a second chance at life. After the angel said to the woman that Jesus had been risen from the dead, he told the ladies to tell the disciples that Jesus would meet them soon in Galilee, just as he had said and promised. Listen to the angel's exact words, verse 7. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Did you catch it? The angel said what? And Peter. The angel wanted to make sure that Peter would know that all is forgiven. Now, in my preaching ministry, I think I make a point about this point about Apostle Peter every Easter. But you know what? I should probably make this point every week of the, uh, of the year, every Sunday that we gather, or at least allude to that point. What point? That in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, through the power of his sacrificial death on the cross, you, yes, you, every one of us, each and every one of you, you can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. Our world today is characterized more than ever by a lack of mercy. We live increasingly in a world with no room for error, no room for grace. Today, any leader doing what Peter did would basically, he would be canceled, done away with. But in the kingdom of God, in the, in, the way, in, the, in the way that God does things in the kingdom of God, and by the way, many people find this offensive just as well, but in the kingdom of God, there is always room for grace. Always, no matter who you are, no matter what you have done. Peter gets a second chance at life. Spoiler. What happens next in Peter's life? After Jesus restores him, Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 are saved. He later prays for a man sitting in front of the temple gate. That man is healed. In fact, Peter becomes known as a man filled with the power of God. Scripture tells us in the book of Acts that when Peter would walk down the street, people would try to get close enough that his own shadow would pass over them. Why? Because they believed that they would be healed. Peter became a great leader in the church, and according to church tradition, he was later martyred, at, he was crucified as a martyr. So on Good Friday, Peter denies Jesus. He certainly deserved to live out the rest of his life in shame and guilt, but then he got a second chance at life. That's how his story ends. 
And by the way, you get a second chance too, every one of us, every one of you. You get a second chance too. As many second chances, in fact, you may need. His story ends this way. And that's how your story can play out as well. One more spoiler for you. The third spoiler for today. After the crucifixion, the disciples all scattered in fear. They went underground. They met behind locked doors. Why? Because they were afraid that the same leaders who came after Jesus and crucified him, they would eventually come after the disciples next. Just imagine that. So at this point of the story, the future did not look very bright for the Jesus movement. Is seen for certain, inevitable, that this collection of misfits would just fade away. The memory of their leader would soon be forgotten, just like it happened many, many times, even before Jesus, because there were other messiahs who came on the scene and said, I am the one. And they were soon forgotten. Followers scattered. But here's what happened next. Instead, Jesus' followers became energized with purpose and they were mobilized for action. They were energized for purpose and mobilized for action. The Gospels tell us that after the disciples had seen the risen Christ, after he had spent some time with them, ate with them, fellowship with them, taught them, and prepare them for the future, giving them one more last set of instructions, Jesus was then taken up into heaven. And Mark chapter 16 continues this. So the Gospel of Matthew, Mark concludes with these words in verse 20. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. This is just Mark's way of just putting a tiny bow to make sure that there isn't the end of his telling of the story. But there's so much more than just this one verse. So many things happen. A minute ago, I mentioned Pentecost, where Peter would preach and thousands were saved. They came to faith. And afterwards, the church spread throughout Jerusalem and then to the end of the world. The followers of Jesus preached a message of freedom, equality, mercy for all. They preached a message that was filled with promise of a new life, filled with purpose, fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the years and decades and centuries to come, Jesus continued to work through his people. His followers preached a message that had never been heard before. You know that. Or did you know that? They preached a message that was never heard before. A message that even today is unique among the, all the other world religions. You may have been taught that all the religions are the same. It is not. There is one unique factor in what we call Christianity. And that is this. By the death of Jesus... You are forgiven. By the death of Jesus, you and I are freely forgiven. Other religions will say to you, you need to earn it. You need to do enough things so that God, whoever that might be, will forgive you. But Christianity is different. There's nothing that we can do, but Jesus did it for us. By the death of Jesus, you are freely forgiven. But not only that, Not only did he die for us, he was raised for us. So by his death, we are freely forgiven. By his resurrection, we can claim the promises of a brand new life. He did not just die for us that we are forgiven. He rose for us so that you and I can have the hope of a brand new life. That we have the power to reign in life. The work that his first followers began, you and I, we are called to continue. Jesus has given us a mandate. Verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. God is still moving all throughout the world. You and I and all others who claim faith in him, his people are continuing to do the work that Jesus began. 
preach the gospel to all creation. Now, it would be wrong to think that this preaching is done exclusively from where I stand, from a pulpit or from a platform. It's not. Instead, it is done, what is done, the preaching of the gospel, the preaching and the spreading of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel is done every time a follower of Christ shares the love of God with someone else. That means that every time someone, you, every time you and I, you share God's love with someone, the gospel is preached. The gospel is preached and the world is changed. That's what it means. It's not something that only I do, but all of us do. But the point is this, because of the resurrection, the followers of Jesus, hiding behind locked doors, afraid for their lives, they become energized with a purpose, a mandate. And they were mobilized for action. And you can as well. You can as well. When you are ready, God will fill your life with purpose. Purpose. And he will give you, and he will also give you the power, the power that you need to actually carry that out, to do his will. Let me bring it to a close. There's a blogger that I follow online, and he wrote these words. Back in 19... 19- 80, he wrote, I went to see the movie E.T. in the theater. Do you remember that? And he continues, I haven't seen it before, but this kid sitting behind me, he had seen the movie. And he kept telling his sister what would happen next. So there were no surprises for me in any part of the movie. And toward the end, if you know the story, if you watched it, when it looks like You might need a handkerchief because it got sad at that point. The little girl said she was so sad. She was so sad. But her brother quickly said, no, don't cry. Just wait. And then he told her and then the rest of us what was about to happen. Do you get it? It's supposed to be bad manners to tell anyone how a movie ends. It's bad form to tell how a story ends, yes? But in this little boy's mind, it was just too good not to tell others. It was just too good to keep it to himself. It was too good not to give away because that's how a good ending is, yes? Like the story of Easter. It's just too good not to give away. There may be times when for you and I or someone that you love very dearly, it feels like the reality of life has overwhelmed you. This is not me just trying to tug at your life, your heartstrings and whatnot. But I have a sense sometimes that even if we come on Sunday and we celebrate, we face the reality of life soon after. More than any other day, I hope that you will listen to God's Spirit talking to you. There may be times when for you it feels like all hope is lost. The world is crashing around you. There is sickness, there is death, death, there is a struggle that... The world is crashing around you. You have failed too much and failed too often to ever find your way. When we gather on Sunday, it's not meant for you to deny that. But hear this news and consider it. I want you to know that that's just Friday talking. That's Friday talking. That's just Saturday telling you what it thinks it knows. Don't forget what happens next. Jesus is risen, and he is alive. And he imparts salvation to you. That's how the story ends. 
And I ask if you keep that in mind as you consider how your own story might play out in the days to come. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of the session of elders, happy, happy Easter, Resurrection Sunday to you and to your family. Today I'm telling you how the story ends, although it's bad form, because it's just too good not to give away. So here's the main point. Because I know how Jesus' story ends, My story can be filled with hope and so many possibilities. So I say to you, let us live as Easter people. Let us live as people of the resurrection. And let us begin today. This is my hope and my prayer for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today I'm going to invite you as we listen to the old, old story once again to join me at the table to visualize and to remember why we can claim this truth, why we have this hope, why you and I, we can live a brand new life. Let's begin by together professing our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. The words should be before you. One, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious God, on this special day that we call Easter, Resurrection Sunday, we come before you, we come to the table. As we celebrate what Jesus has done for us, we ask, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup. And as we celebrate this holy mystery, that we may be one with Christ and he with us. Today we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Fill us with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people. All glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite our two serving elders today, Gordon and uh, Paul, to join me up front. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, more than any other day, remember on this day. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we celebrate not only his death, but his resurrection, giving us hope of a brand new life. All of you are invited to share in this table. Let us remember that we do not come because somehow we are worthy, but we are allowed to come because he who is worthy who gave his life, invites you to the table.
Sounds like you're ready. The body of Christ. Just as a reminder, afterwards, we do ask you to take your individual cups and uh, deposit into the wastebasket by the double doors. On this holy day, let us hear and remember the good news. Jesus suffered and died for something he did not do, so that you and I would never be judged for what we did do. But he came back to life, giving us the hope of a brand new life. The blood of Christ. Join me in prayer once more. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Jesus who gave himself for us. As we prepare to conclude our service and to go back into the world, we ask of you, help us, that we may go out into the world by the strength of your spirit, that we may find ways to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is our living hope. May God help us to share this living hope with others. Please stand if you're able. And join us as we sing Living Hope.
Let's bow our heads for our closing thoughts and our closing prayer. Is it bad manners to tell the ending of a story? Of course it is. But some endings are just too good to hold on to. It's just worth telling. And sometimes I think that those in the church need to hear this as well because the reality of life affects all of us. So brothers and sisters, whatever your past may have been, even up to yesterday, even to today, whatever struggle or trouble that you may be struggling with, I ask of you to consider today. The story doesn't end with Friday, and I'm telling you the rest of the story. Jesus is alive. That's how his story ends. My hope and prayer is that that will influence, motivate you to live out the rest of your story with hope and so many possibilities. God, we thank you for a time of worship. Thank you for the reminder that we are called to be people of the resurrection. So let us today claim that promise of the new life you've given to us. Let us do our best this week to live the life that you want us to live. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Whatever you do in word or action, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.